So there are two types of bonds in the high school chemistry level. There's ionic bonding and there's covalent bonding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them into two different podcasts. Ionic bonding we tend to do a little bit more with, so I want to really focus this podcast in on just the ionic bonding. And then the podcast that will come after this deals with nothing but covalent bonding, which is usually dealt with at more so on the uh, advanced placement and college level for covalence. So let's talk about what an ion is first. Now we've talked about ions when we talked about electrons back in the atomic theory unit. An ion is an atom that has either gained or lost electrons. For example, Na plus, Cl minus, both considered ions. Na would be a positive ion, Cl is a minus ion, a negative ion. Now, how do I form an ionic bond, though, involving ions? Well, an ionic bond is actually really simple. They used to think it was just a straight up, like, electrons transferring to each other. So, one thing actually sends an electron over to another thing, and then the two things like grab onto each other because of that electron. And we've discovered, now that our technology is a lot more advanced, that it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but totally makes obvious sense once you sit down and think about it. So, like I said, so what happens, now what they think, now what they know happens is when one atom sends the electron over to the other atom, the atom that lost the electron is now positively charged. The atom that gained the electron is negatively charged. And when that positive and that negative are formed, they attract, just like opposite sides of a magnet. So let me show this to you in symbolic form. So um, let's recall back to our last podcast about Lewis symbols. Sodium would have one dot because it's um, 3s1. So it gets one dot. Chlorine has seven dots. We did this previously on another example. So let's fill in the Lewis symbols for them. Now, if you remember, I said to you in, when we we're doing Lewis symbols that you want to go like around and around and around. Well, now that we're going to be forming bonds, you'll notice that I put the single electrons on um, sides that are facing each other. So the reason I have them on the sides that are facing each other is that's where the bond is going to form. So bonds form wherever there are single electrons. So when I draw my Lewis symbols, I want to make sure I orient them towards each other. So now here's what's going to happen. So I made them different colors just so you can see which one came from the sodium. The sodium gives up an electron to the chlorine. And now that sodium gave up an electron to the chlorine, it's now positive. Chlorine taking in that electron has now become negative. So I'm going to move this to a bigger screen so that this way we can see it a little bit easier. So this is the same thing we just saw, OK? So I've got my sodium. I've got my chlorine. Positive, negative. Now, what they realized is later that what happens is when that electron transfer happens, they used to think that the sodium still held on to the electron a little bit, but it doesn't. It's just that chlorine is now so negative and sodium is now so positive that they immediately <laughs> suck into each other and attract like two sides of a very strong magnet. So this is what's going to happen. My charge goes away and my sodium and chlorine come together and the electrons kind of move into the middle. And, they fo and then we rewrite it with this little line. So let me back this whole thing up so you can see this better. So once again, let me repeat. You know, my charges are going to go away for simplicity's sake. Now my sodium and my chlorine attract together. The electrons move between the atoms, and bam, we rewrite those two electrons with a single line. I know, folks, I have mad PowerPoint skills. OK, so sorry, I have to pat myself on the back a little bit. So now let's look at different examples. So that's just sodium chloride. Now you'll see when you watch the uh, covalent bonding podcast, it looks exactly the same regardless of how you draw it on paper. But in reality, it has very different purposes. So again, keep in mind, ionic bond, positive thing attracts negative thing, and the attraction is what forms the bond. So now let's look at another ionic compound, but that's slightly more complicated. So let's look at BeCl2. Now BeCl2 is beryllium chloride, and you'll notice that I've already filled in the dots for you. So hopefully you're pausing this and writing this down. Now again, notice that I oriented my single dots towards each other. So there's a single dot on the Be towards one chlorine, single dot on the Be towards the other chlorine. You're like, well, wait a second, Mr. Siegel. Be only has two dots, so couldn't I have just put them like top and bottom instead of left and right, or top and right and top or left or whatever? Any any combination, so that they're just singles in a way. Yes, absolutely. On paper, it doesn't really matter how you draw it. In reality, this molecule will go flat like this; will be 180 degrees. We'll talk about this in the molecular geometry section. So, for right now, I don't care how you orient them. So now let's see again. Same principle occurs. Chlorine is attracted to this side of the B. This other chlorine is attracted to that side of the B, and now we rewrite the dots 
so that the dots have lines instead. Each dot represents one pair of electrons in this. And that's BeCl2. And again, I could do a hundred examples of this. It doesn't really matter. Now we've seen, now we're going to make magnesium hydroxide. Now magnesium hydroxide has these parentheses there. Don't be confused by the parentheses. The parentheses, again, the number outside, tells you that the O and the H are grouped together and that there's, a, there's two of them in this molecule. So that means I've got one O and H set up already. That means I need a second O and H eventually. So let me fill in the electron pairs first. So I, I'm sorry, all my Lewis symbols first. So magnesium has two electrons. Oxygen has six electrons. And hydrogen has one electron. Now like I said, the parentheses tell me that the O and the H are grouped together and that there's two of them. So I need the two together and that the O and the H have to bond to each other before anything else happens like this. Now, those OH groups, those hydroxide groups, are now going to bond to the magnesium directly. So one comes in from one side, and we rewrite so it forms a line. One comes in from the other side, and rewrites it and forms a line. Now, as you practice this, it doesn't really matter how you draw this out. I've been drawing the Lewis symbol separately from the actual whole molecule. Do that until you can just look at the periodic table and see how many bonds something is going to make. Remember, single dots equal bonds. And the electron pairs are absolutely necessary. So if you look at the electron pairs on this oxygen, on each oxygen, you've got two pairs of electrons that are not bonding. They are called non-bonding electrons. They are important to the molecule. You must draw them. Okay? So in the next podcast, I'm going to deal with a, a covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is very similar to ionic bonding. It just happens a little bit differently. And when you draw it on paper, as you'll see through the examples, there's no difference between the two.